Hello viewers, I am Anita Narula, postgraduate teacher from Kendri Vidyale Air Force Station, Gurgaon. The chapter I am going to take up today is for the students of class 12 from their book, India, People and Economy. And the name of chapter is Migration, Its Types, Causes and Consequences. Now, the question arises, what do we mean by the term migration? So migration is the one where the people, they move from one place to another place over a period of time is known as migration. Migration can be of two types. One is permanent migration and the second is temporary migration. Now, what is permanent migration? When people migrate permanently from one place to another is known as permanent migration. The reasons for the permanent migrations may be different. Now, what is temporary migration? This is basically a term used for the periodic migration. That periodic can be the annual, seasonal or daily migration is known as temporary migration. Now, when we talk about migration, so that means the person who migrate is known as a migrant person. So, how do we define the term migrant person? It is the one who at a given census was enumerated at the place other than his or her place of birth is known as a migrant person. Now, migration and census of India. There are two bases of enumerating migration. One is the place of birth and second, the place of residence. Census data is a information which also contains the migration statistics. First time the data was recorded at the time of the first census which was conducted in 1881. Later on with the passage of time certain modifications were made in the criteria for collecting the information about the migration. So in 1961 census the modification was made to include the place of birth and the duration of residence. Duration of residence means if the person is born somewhere else. Then after 10 years, again in 1971 census, the additional information on the place of last residence and the duration of stay at the place of enumeration was also incorporated while collecting the data of migration. Then further modification was made in the year 1981, where the information on the reasons of migration was incorporated. So, census of India determines the migration by place of birth or the place of residence. Now, what do you mean by the place of birth? If the place of birth is different from the place of enumeration. So, that means that is known as the lifetime migration. And when we check up the place of residence, it is the place of last residence is different from the place of enumeration is known as the migration by place of last residence. Now, there are few facts about the Indian population and their movement. Indian population is the one of the least mobile population of the world. Maybe the reason the traditional tendency of the Indians that they do not want to make a change in their life. 2001, 307 million population that is around 30 percent of the population was reported as the migrants on the basis of 
the criteria which is the place of birth. And when we talk about the place of last residence, it was 31 percent of the population which migrated under this criteria that is the place of last residence. Now we talk about the two types of migration. The two types are internal migration and international migration. Now dear children, the internal migration is the one which is within the country only and the international migration when people migrate out of the country is the international migration. Now very interesting aspect of the migration is the streams of migration. So on the basis of the direction of movement, migration is of four types. Now listen children carefully that what are these four types of the migration? One, when the people migrate from rural area to urban area. Number two, the migration of the people from urban area to urban itself. Number three, when the people migrate from rural area to rural area, that is a third stream of migration. And lastly, when we speak about the migration from urban to rural areas, which is not very common in India, and you can have a visual of the bar diagram stating the intrastate migration by the place of last residence. And these statistics are on the basis of the census 2001. Now this is a multiple bar diagram children as you can see on your screens. Multiple bar diagrams indicating the two types of the bars, one for the males, another is for the females. The darker color as the index indicates is for the male population and the lighter color is for the female migration. Now on this diagram you can see rural to rural migration which is a short distance migration. And in this stream of migration you can see the females are outnumbering the male population. In the second stream of migration, which is rural to rural urban migration, in that case also the females are outnumbering the males. In the third, urban to rural, again you can see the outnumbered by the female migration. And lastly, urban to urban migration, the females are outnumbering the males. Now what are the reasons for this migration? This I'll take up when we discuss the causes of migration and then we will be discussing about the reasons for the migration. Now in this visual, if you see on your screens, this is the interstate migration. The previous one was the intrastate where the migration is within the state. And on this visual, if you see, this indicates the interstate migration. So that means the migration from one state to another state. So when the migration is from one state to another state, so that means this is a long distance migration. And in this case, you can find under the stream rural to urban migration, the males are outnumbering the females. So it clearly indicates that in the country like the India, where the traditions are thoroughly followed, there the males only, they migrate the long distances. And the reason is obvious for that, that is for their work or for seeking the employment, they have to migrate the long distances. And the further causes of these migrations will be discussing up when we take up the second part of the chapter that is the causes of migration. Now both the figures have, as you have seen 
in the visuals, they show the distribution of male and female migrants in the different streams of intrastate and interstate migration. And children, I have made it clear to you what is intrastate, that is within the state, and interstate is from one state to another state. In the layman's language, the intrastate can be termed as short distance migration, and the interstate can be termed as a long distance migration. So in both the types of migration, the females predominate the stream of short distance, and that is very clear. The short distance is migration maybe because of the marriage reason, or maybe some other natural calamity reason that the people migrate short distances. Now this type of migration is primarily, as I've told you, is because of the marriage, because the females have to leave their parents and live with the in-laws. And in contrast, men predominate rural to urban stream of the interstate migration, which is a long distance migration. And that migration is in the search of jobs or the better quality of life. Now, the second type of migration we take up, that is the international migration. According to 2001 census, more than 5 million people migrated to India from the other countries. And out of that 5 million population children, 95% of migration was from the neighboring countries. So those neighboring countries are Bangladesh, from where around 3 million population migrated. Second neighboring country, Pakistan, from where 0.9 million population migrated. In comparison to the neighboring country, Nepal, from where 0.5 million population migrated. And the refugees also came from the different parts, that is, from Tibet area, from Sri Lanka, and even the refugees from Bangladesh and Afghanistan, accounting for 0.16 million of the migrants. Now, children, just look at the screens and you can have a tabular view of the migrants. It says that the international migration, in that the migration from the neighboring countries was 95.5%. And as I've already told you, the neighboring countries are Afghanistan with 0.2% of the migration, and the maximum migration on the table, you can see children from the Bangladesh accounting around 60%. Bhutan, 0.2%, China, 0.5%, Myanmar, 0.1%, Nepal, 11.6%, Pakistan, 19.3%, and Sri Lanka, 2.8%. So children, we have taken up the one part of the chapter that what is the migration and what are the types of migration. Under this, we have done the international migration as well as the national, or we call it the internal migration. Besides that, we have taken up the streams of migration, which can be defined as the short distance migration or the long distance migration. And under that, the intrastate and interstate migration also, we have seen the visuals of the these types of the migration. And it must be very clear to you that why do the females, they migrate short distances, and why the males, they migrate long distances. Thank you very much.